You're listening to The Jets Factor on SoundCloud.com and the Grandstand Sports Network. Third down snap. Sanchez to the end zone over Arrington and touchdown New York's Centennial Holmes. Now, now, here's your host, CJ DeSimone. What's going on, Jets Nation? Welcome to another edition of the Jets Factor Podcast here on SoundCloud.com, the Grandstand Sports Network, and the UNB Sports Network. I'm your host, CJ the Painkiller D. Simone, and I'm joined, as always, by my partner in crime, my right seater, my navigator, and of course, my very best friend, Carlos the Hitman Sardinas. Carlos, what's going on tonight, brother? I think we need to change the drop a little bit, man. I've been around like entirely too much to to not have my name called out by the special, you know, radio guy. Yeah, we could do it. We could definitely get that changed. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, we're taking so, the focus. Uh, yeah. You just got out of just got out of witness protection. So, <laughs> that's true. That is very, very true. <laughs> so, I don't know if you so, want to if, if if you want to attract that much attention to yourself all at once. You know, so I figure we'll 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 just we'll just ease it in. Maybe the marshals will miss it a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> you got it, man. You got it. Uh, so I'm excited for tonight's show. Today's show. Yeah. Whenever you're listening. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Absolutely. Dude. You know, we we had initially came to the agreement that we weren't going to do a show. However, tonight we got a very special guest who's going to be joining us in just a little bit. Uh. So we decided, you know what, what the hell, let's throw some content out there, even though I know this is the dead of the off season, there's really not much going on. But, however, we do got a couple of pretty interesting talking points tonight. Uh, one about some recent comments made by Ben McAdoo, former Giants head coach, which I'll go into in, in a little bit. And then Who the hell cares interest- what Ben McAdoo has to say? <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, that well, guy looked like a freaking wannabe Mob child molester. That's what he looked like. <laughs> like, who the hell cares what Ben McAdoo has to say? Yeah, right, that anyway. is true. Keep going. Keep, so. going. Keep going down the, the storyboard. Yeah, so, you know, another <laughs> thing, too, that we want to, that we want to uh, mention, you know, uh, Devin Smith. Uh, Devin ah, Smith is that the I'd like no to get more. into. That yeah, I'd like to get into. Yeah, we're actually going to talk about that uh, uh, with Devin Smith now, not uh, – you know, as being a member of the New York Jets anymore, he has actually been cut. You know, it's um, it, it, it's you know, it's just crazy. It, uh, I mean, you know, you, you kind of feel bad for the kid because, I mean, the kid started all together. He started fourteen. He he dressed for fourteen games as a New York Jet. He started three. So and, and you know, with him being a second round pick, there was a lot of. Uh, I guess a lot of expectations. You know, when you're drafted in the second round, you're expected to pretty much be a starter. And not only be a, just a starter, but to be a viable starter, someone who can actually contribute on offense. But first, before we start getting into all of that, um, real quick through the sponsorship, uh, Jets Factor Podcast is brought to you tonight by StatementGames.com. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, we still have the sweepstakes going on. New York Jets, New England Patriots tickets, you have an opportunity to win them. You have an opportunity to enter in, to be one of the lucky, uh, one of the lucky Jet fans, to get a pair of tickets Thanksgiving weekend to Jets New England at MetLife Stadium. Uh, we'll be talking about that toward the end of the show. So, again, don't forget to check out StatementGames.com. Take your fantasy game to the next level. And, of course, the Jets Factor Podcast is also brought to you by Big C's Barbershop in Sebastian. When you need an old-school cut, Big C's is your place to go for all your grooming needs. Call 772 area code 663-4440 or search up Big C's Barbershop on Google Plus or on Facebook. You can actually book an appointment from his page on Facebook. Big C's is the place to be. All right, so I call us. Let's you dive right into this. I- I actually want to ask you something about, uh, or, or mention something about StatementGames.com. So All right. okay, I had the shoot. pleasure of Go talking ahead. with Mark today, actually, who runs StatementGames.com. And nice. one of the things that I think we're going to be conducting as the season progresses is a league of some kind where our listeners participate and can win some type of prize that has not been discussed 
or disclosed yet. Stay tuned. Yes, Just for listeners tuned. of this podcast. Yeah, especially we we had told everybody that hey, you know what? Um, uh, we told everybody that we got some we got some big things planned for this uh, for this upcoming season here at the Jets Factor Podcast. So you know, everyone just keep your eyes and ears peeled. Continue to look out for the content. Continue to subscribe. Smash that like button in the face. You know, uh, get us in your Google Play feeds. Get us in your Stitcher feeds, your Podcast Republic feeds, or whatever vehicle you get your podcasts on. Make sure you've got Jets Factor Podcast at the top of that list as we continue to bring you more details as to some of the stuff we got going on during the course of the season. It's going to be awesome. We're excited. We can't wait. But now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our special guest who's joining us tonight. He is the page moderator of Fly Jets Fly, a New York Jets uh, page on Facebook. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like everyone to put their hands together for Mr. William Cochran. All right, all right, all right. (laughs) Bill, how are you doing tonight? Thanks for taking some time out to join us. Awesome. Awesome introduction. Such class. <laughs> well, hey, that's, hey how, Bill. That, that, that's how we do here on the Jets Factor podcast, you know? Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm digging it. All right. So, Billy, this is the first time we've actually had you on our show, so what I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to tell all, all of our listeners just a little bit about yourself and a little bit about the Facebook page you guys got, Fly Jets Fly. All right, all right. I've been running uh, Facebook jet groups for since uh, Facebook opened, probably. That's my main thing about being on Facebook is talking about Jets football. And it's finally here. we got a group open. It's called Fly Jets Fly. We try to make it as entertaining as possible. It's a good group, good people. We don't let anybody... You know, trash anybody else or anything. It's family. It's Jets family, and um, it's a great group. It's growing, and it's up to 1,572 members. I've deleted some members that were inactive. If I didn't do that, you know, we have more numbers, but I'm not worried about numbers. I'm, I'm more concerned about quality. I want to hear some good posts from people. You know what I'm saying? And I also run um, some Instagram sites. One is called New York Jetters, and that is awesome to run. I was going to ask you about that, Bill, because that's one of my favorite ones. Just that's saying. Awesome that's a good run. one. Everybody <laughs> treats everybody cool. All the girls are not jealous or nothing like that. Every girl is friends. They're all good. Jets family right there. It's awesome. It's uh, it's awesome to run. And I run another page on IG. It's called New York Jets Rewind, man. Just a little something, something, you know what I'm saying? Keep busy. Keep Jets. Yeah, busy. absolutely. And so, you know, again, thank you so much for taking the time out to uh, to come and join us tonight. We actually got a couple of topics on the a uh, uh, couple of topics on the docket tonight. And you also wanted to discuss a little bit of the offense. So what I'm going to do is, my friend, I'm going to throw you into the deep end of the pool here. Sorry, but this is how we initiate people on the Jets Factor podcast. Uh, we, were, we were talking, uh, you and I were talking privately on Facebook Messenger today about the Jets offense and about the dismissal of Johnny Morton. And you were very uh, outspoken in the fact that you really think that John Morton really shouldn't have been fired. I'd like you to elaborate on that a little bit for us. Yeah, I don't think he should have. I think uh, Todd Bowles got a little discouraged, wanted to call some, what, he wanted to call some more running plays or something like that. I think think the offense was running great under John Morton's offense. I mean, we had Josh McCann have one of his best years ever. He played 13 games, and, you know, we did, he did, the offense was was very good to me. I don't think he deserved to be fired, but Todd Bowles said he wanted more control of it, so 
he fired him, and he's hired Jerry Bates. Jeremy Bates. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see if um, who's calling the offensive plays. If Todd Bowles gets like more call plays, maybe thirty, forty percent, and Todd uh, uh, Bates is only getting sixty percent. Who knows? I don't know. I think Morton did a great job last year. I think our defense melted down. You know, we kicked we kicked butt in the beginning and right off the bat. It was awesome. Had the offense rolling. We'll see how they do this year. So, Bill, Bill Carlos here. Thanks for joining us, by the way. I don't think we've we've gotten to meet, but I'm uh, I'm the co-host, co-founder of the show as well, along with my best friend CJ here. Um, do you think that injury played a big part in the fact that Johnny Morton was fired? And what I mean by that is, like, once Josh McCown went down, as much as Jets fans may get on him, the whole freaking – all the wheels came off the leg. Right. What, what do you think about that? Right, right, right. Once Josh McCown went down, we had Bryce Fetty come in, and we saw what we saw. I mean, that was just <laughs> – just the worst. I can't imagine watching that again. I mean, that was just the worst. Bryce Petty was garbage. He wasn't worth a second. Well, well, well that was a Christian. He was the fourth. That's he, Christian. Yeah, yeah, he was the fourth. Yeah, Petty was the fourth. Petty was fourth. Fourth round. You know, I don't know. I thought he had some potential, but, oh, my God, that was horrible. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, the, the fact that Petty played over Hack, you know, and yeah. then you see what happened with Hackenberg after he got cut by the Jets and right. couldn't right. even stick around with the Raiders through, like, before oh, even OTA Hack. started. Hack should have got, Hack should have got put in maybe at least one game. Well, I, I, I mean, I think the leagues told you what, how bad of a disaster that pick was, which... I, See, yeah, this is a moment that will live in infamy. Infamy in our show was me flipping out about freaking Hackenberg. It is yep. a thing of legend because I knew that that was a horrible pick. I knew it from the second it happened. Me, me also. And to not get any playing time in a regular season game, I mean, was Hackenberg that bad? Who knows? I think so, man. He got cut by the Raiders in this off season. It's like their fourth quarterback. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> you know, it was, it was a surprise pick to me. I didn't expect that. I think that was one of those picks where Mac was thinking he was the smartest guy in the room and maybe overthought it a little bit too much. Oh, but you know, like all the second round picks have been pretty disastrous, and that brings me to a piece that we were talking about a little bit earlier: Devin Smith getting cut today. What What are your thoughts on that, Bill? Oh, he had to go. He wasn't. He's not going to be able to play no more. It doesn't look like he's, his career is uh, going to continue. So it's, it's a sad, it's, it's sad situation for him because when he plays, he's good. But the injuries. He just hardly played. He hardly played. Yeah, he had a, you know, and he lost something from the speed between all the injuries. Get he's going, got faster you know? guys off the practice squad. It's a sad situation for him, you know. We had to let him go. Waste another waste See, of pick. I think it was uh, injured in college also. You gotta, yeah, he had a little bit of injury history at uh, Ohio State as well. Um, he played a little bit in the return game. He was a he was a burner, you know, down the field. But with like Robbie Anderson and then you bring in Terrell Pryor, he's fairly redundant too. It, it made sense, CJ. I, I want to hear what you think about Devin. Uh, I was about to say Devin Hester, and I was about to defame Devin Hester because no. this guy sure as hell is not Devin Hester. Uh, Devin Smith, what do you think about you know how that went down? Just the, the short and fairly irrelevant career of Devin Smith in New York Jets. Well, you know, I mean, basically his, his entire career and uh, could pretty much be summed up in two very simple sound bites, which I'm going to play for you. The first is going to be... Because that was all the talk about Devin Smith coming out of college, 
about how he's got great speed and if he can keep himself healthy and all the other, you know, the, the potential that he could do. He could really turn out to be a solid number two receiver in this league. And this is exactly what happened. So basically, another second-round pick that the Jets can shove up their ass with Jason Morrow, Christian Hackenberg, and countless other ones <laughs> who we who we. Oh, don't forget Stephen Hill, my personal oh, favorite. Oh, 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 Stephen Hill. Sorry. Don't, don't, Sorry. Uh, uh. <laughs> I have to say, you know, say the second-round pick. The second-round yeah. pick when we picked Marcus May, I was a little disturbed by that. He turned out okay? There was a running back that was there that I thought was okay. Oh, man, what was his name? The Dalvin Cook from Minnesota. Okay. Who got unfortunately injured, but he showed that he's a number one running back. But Marcus May, I was afraid of his injuries that he had in college also for a second-round pick, and... Dalvin Cook was there, and we need a running back bad, but Mark well, May showed that he's proven to be a second round pick at least, maybe a. First yeah, he pick. he really uh, believe it or not, he really impressed. You know, Marcus May coming out because I know that there was. There was a lot of hesitation with the second-round pick because, you know, look, the Jets have whiffed on second-round picks. I mean, so many that we could name, all right? We just got finished naming uh, naming a bunch. Okay, so, uh, you know, Marcus May, believe it or not, when he was selected, uh, this was when I was actually working at a, at a pharmacy in Rockledge, one of my coworkers who is a huge uh, University of Florida alum. And she came in, and she was telling me the day after the the day after the Jets selected him, she was like, "Oh my God, you're gonna love, you're gonna love Marcus May," and started like rattling off all his stats and all of this other stuff, like like she was a human highlight reel, you know, for this kid. So, yeah. I, I mean, for me, I was like, "Okay, I'll I'll take your word for it. I've watched some tape on the kid. He, he looks pretty good. Let's all, you know, he can keep it up." And quietly, believe it or not, last year. He became one of the one of the leaders on defense, you know, along with Jamal Adams, to to really you know kickstart this youth movement that the Jets are currently in. So you know, obviously he tailed off toward the end of the year. Who knows if the injury that he suffered had a lot to do with it, with his production going down. But right now, the main thing is is that injury wise, health wise, he's he's on pace to be ready for training camp. We expect him to come back 100. percent We expect him to have you know another solid year. Uh, building off. Now, my question for you is, Jamal Adams, you know, there's been big talk about him as being a generational talent. And last year, Jamal Adams has actually shown flashes of it. And over the offseason, he's been actively recruiting players to come play for the green and white. You know, he's been incredibly vocal and incred- incredibly active on social media. You know, uh, on a lot of the, the media interviews that he does, he still continues to say, you know what, people are sleeping on us, and we're, you know, this New York Jets team is going to surprise some people. So what, what are your thoughts about, uh, about that, and do you think that he's got it. the ability to back up that kind of talk? Oh, I love I – love, I love, I, you, you got to love Jamal Adams. He's a leader. We need a leader. We need some vocal leaders on that team, you know. Jamal Adams is a leader, and he's uh, he's gonna he's gonna uh, surprise a lot of people this year that think he was uh, a bust number one pick. I think he, the boy's got he's all football. He's I, I, I I don't think I've heard anyone ever refer to him as a bust at all. Like I, I mean, he's a definitely great talent coming out, vocal leader, obviously. Um, maybe could use a little bit of touching up in the past coverage, maybe. But, I mean, there's no one coming out saying, you know what, that was a bad pick. I, I've never heard that in my life. The way Bowles runs his um, secondary, if he runs the secondary, he, he has the secondary running different, different routes and everything. And last year it was a little messed up. 
I think, I, well, I mean, I yeah. think that, that was a product of his cornerbacks, though. Well, uh, Bill, it, it's not the safeties. safeties. Um, the cornerbacks just weren't very good. They got enough yeah. talent. Oh, absolutely, and I think we've upgraded the the cornerbacks. And and you know, the thing about like Marcus May is he's almost the opposite of Adams, or he sh- keeps his mouth shut. By the way, local boy, Palm Bay High School, represent Brevard County, uh, Marcus May. He just shut his mouth and did his job. I, I think he did very well last year too. You know, Marcus Hell May yeah. was arguably the leader of that defense without opening his mouth. But both of those guys are going to do wonderful. And now that we've spent a little bit to try to upgrade the, the rest of the back end of that secondary, you know, I, I can see the Jets' defense, if they could answer the pass rush riddle, being one of the top five to ten in the league. Bill, your thoughts? They should be not giving up as many touchdowns as they did last year. They gave up a lot of passing touchdowns. If you look back at the records, I don't know how many it was, but a lot of passing touchdowns were burnt on the secondary last year. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you on that. I, I, I know. I, I think they've got – I think they tried to address that a little bit with getting some of the cornerbacks that they did. Hopefully that works out. I think ultimately, though, you've got to get to the quarterback. You can't let them be sitting back there for 10 seconds. You know what I mean? I might be exaggerating trying to guard NFL wide receivers for five, six seconds at a time, you're going to get burned every time. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, if, if I could chime in here just for a second, but, I mean, you know, Jamal Adams was asked to do a lot of stuff. He was asked to be extremely versatile last year. And there were some times where he found himself, you know, caught out of position. But there also were some times that, you know, he, he dropped a couple, you know, dropped a couple fumbles. He had a, a, a couple of interceptions that went in and out of his hands, you know, wh- whether it be, you know, just a concentration issue or just, you know, being, um, you, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like ha- having those, those mental lapses, you know, wh- when you're out there in coverage, you know, you need to be focused on that ball. And, you know, one of the, one of the, um, the, one of the reputations that Jamal Adams had coming out of college was he was a ball hawk. So we we expected him to you know to really kind of rack up those those interceptions, which is something you know Jets defense has not really been known a lot for takeaways since you know the first couple of years Rex Ryan was coach, you know. Yeah. So we we definitely need to get back, um, you know, back to that uh, that rationale, back to that mindset, that killer instinct, that that attacking defense. So Billy, I got another question for you. Uh, which, do you really think that this defense as a whole right now, the, the way that it's constructed, with the secondary, I know that Mo Claiborne is all banged up, um, but he's still expected to be ready for training camp, um, you know, with the addition of Trumaine Johnson, do you really think that, they, that this defense right now has the personnel to be able to take that next step forward, or do you still think that they're a couple people away? A couple of people away. Linebacker position needs some help. We'll see what the new guy Avery Wilson brings along, or Williamson brings along, right. and um, looking forward to him. We missed uh, our man that left. Look, uh, it went to Cleveland. What's his name again? Demario Davis. Okay. He did a great job last year. I thought I thought he should have been kept. I don't know. He got a lot of money again. Got a lot, got a good deal, so he went the other way. But got to fix the linebacker position a little bit. But I think the secondary is so talented. I don't think there's any other secondary that's better. So I expect them to control the defense. It's not going to be the defensive line. It's not going to be the linebackers. It's going to be that secondary. And they're going to come in with a secondary. I think Jamal Adams is going to come in closer to the line and come in and try to set the quarterback, maybe get a couple quarterback sacks and be back in the backfield waiting for an interception and covering good. I think 
in the second year, everything's going to go good for that secondary. Which will mean Johnson had it. Watch out. Where do you think the Jets are going to be able to to, to uh, generate some pass rush um, with the addition of uh, Henry Anderson and Nathan Shepard on the line? Do you think that that might start to free up a little bit a, a little bit of stuff for Leonard Williams so he could really get after it? Or, or what what do you think? What what are your thoughts? Leonard Williams needs some help, man. He's getting double teamed, and Nathan Shepard and is young. You know, we we don't know. We don't know what he's going to do. we got to see. Training camp is coming up. Can't wait to see these guys in action and see actually how good they are. But I think the secondary is talented. It's the best secondary. They already built it. That's it. They don't even have to worry about it no more for the next five years. The linebacker. Hey, Bill, I want – Offensive line, I think Brian Winters playing through an injury last year is going to come back this year and be much better. So the offensive line is going to be a little better, especially with Long coming in at center. I think that's going to be a great pick that that Mac made to bring him in. And the offense line is going to be a little better. Let's hope, because I think Teddy Bridgewater should win this starting job. Really? He looks, he looks like he's ready to go. He looks totally safe to play. He, does, he doesn't look like he's injured. He's throwing a nice ball. Josh McCown is named the number one starter. But we all know that if it's Teddy Bridgewater, <laughs> Teddy's going to be number one. So we like to call him Titty B on our show, yep. by the way. Just so you <laughs> Titty know. Titty B. <laughs> Titty B. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing him doing some good things, too. Uh, you wanted to talk about offense. One of the positions I'm most puzzled about, and, and maybe you could give us your thoughts on that, is the running back position. We've got a lot of guys back there, a lot of guys that I like, actually, and I'm kind of curious how they're going to split that out between Blah Pow, Isaiah Crowell, and Elijah McGuire. I think Elijah McGuire deserves a shot. Yeah, you like what you saw? I think he's probably the best back, back there. I think Crowell is a second back still, like he was in Cleveland. I think Powell, this Powell, is, this is going to be his last year, unfortunately. Um, it's gonna, Why do you think they don't like Powell? Well, he's, he's going to be, uh, what, 31, 30 years old next year? Um, I think he's going to be 30 next year. I think he's like 29 right now. Next year, yeah. He's great. Powell is awesome. I love Powell. I think he, if they give him the ball, he, Powell could do some damage. Uh, uh, Powell is great. I don't know how many years he's got left in him. I think he should have been named the number one running back a couple of years ago when we had some injuries. But they never gave, us, gave him a shot because I think Powell likes being just a number two guy. I don't know. It's very strange that... <laughs> I I, nah, I think I they just don't have the that. faith that he's, he can hold up. That's what it is. Like, physically speaking, I think that's why they mix it in. You know, they've always had some other, like, whether it's Matt Forte, you know, or freaking oh, Chris yeah. Ivory or whatever. They've always had a number one that could take the first and second down runs. And then Bilal Powell, they mix in kind of like a third down back, but they're not always. Right. Uh, but I think he excels them. The more touches he got. What do you think, Bill? On Powell? Yeah. <laughs> it's a new offensive coordinator, man. It's it's um, <laughs> Jeremy Bates, and it's I, I know Todd Bowles is going to be wanting to call offensive plays. 
This is what scares me a little bit this year. Tom, wait, 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 wait. You, you think he wants to call plays or, like, dictate he, he pace of play? He the secondary last year to be one of the top ones. So it's scary. I don't know. I don't know what's going to go on. I think McGuire, we'll see in training camp what happens. I think McGuire should be the number one if he can break out in training camp and show that he is. Really? Where do you see Isaiah Crowell um, fitting in, in the rotation in the running backs? And I, uh, uh, another question, do you think that Dimitri Flowers actually beats out Lawrence Thomas for that fullback position? Yeah, so they put in the fullback, Dimitri Flowers. That's it. I just think he's got more uh, more talent and much stronger and I didn't follow him too much in college but the meet you for, for our, I, I, the, the fullback position is is not even existent in any other teams there's only a few teams that carry fullbacks I don't know what the deal is what Bates deal is or what Todd Bowles' deal is with the fullback position. Maybe use him for blocking or what to help before somebody gets hurt by Teddy Bridgewater. <laughs> oh, man. No, oh, no. If Teddy B get, gets don't, injured, don't, let me don't tell you. Don't. Don't hurt Teddy B playing uh, fullback. No. I, I don't think I can pitch him. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. No Titty B at fullback. <laughs> no, 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 definitely not. So not Titty B at fullback. I'm talking about the fullbacks <laughs> protecting the quarterback. Oh, keep protecting the quarterback, uh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah that's, I don't think we're going to see too much of that from Jeremy Bates, to be honest with you. I know that he likes to run a little bit of a hybrid West Coast offense with a little bit of RPO mixed in. I have heard on quite a few interviews with the Jets running backs over the past few weeks that – one of the emphasis, one of the emphases uh, going forward for this offense is, is that they want to run the ball more. So I really think that the Jets are going to lean very heavy on the uh, the running back position, which leads me to believe they're going to go back to doing ground and pound, and that was where again my red flags start going off because I just don't think that our mm-hmm. offensive line is equipped mm-hmm. to be mm-hmm. able Number to one. play a ground and pound type of game now. Who's the pounder? Uh, so, I'm sorry, say again? Who's the pounder? Well, they're probably going to end up with uh, Isaiah Crowell as the uh, as the pounder. I mean, the only thing that he's pounding is his, his fists on the bar for another milkshake. I mean, I don't know what the hell he's going to be pounding, but... I don't know. <laughs> you know. I don't know about that guy. I don't know. Yeah, he's no, actually one of the guys that's a little bit bigger that doesn't really use it. If you watch him last year with the Browns, like... He could be that pounder, I guess, but he doesn't realize he's that big. And, and he doesn't utilize his strength to his advantage. Yeah, I would think more, to be honest with you, that that would be a, a job suited for, for Thomas Rawls. Because, I mean, if you think about it, Rawls no, was supposed no, no, to... No, what, no, no, come on, man. What, you know he's not going to make it through training camp. Well, it's... You know, it, it it depends on if he makes it through, if he makes it through training camp in the in the first place. I mean, yeah. I mean, he got hurt last year, and the Jets basically just took a flyer on him to put to to bring him on the roster. So it's good. Thomas Rawls will be a pounder for like five carries, and he's like a heat seeking <laughs> missile for contact. Like he looks for contact, and then he breaks his freaking collarbone, and God knows what right, else. right, exactly. So I mean, you know, he's supposed to be. Uh, Beast mode 2.0, oh. and he turned out into bitch mode 2.0. <laughs> no, he turned into least mode. <laughs> least least mode. mode, yeah, yeah, there we yeah. go, least mode. <laughs> well, how about, uh, uh, what is it, pup mode? <laughs> Pal- Powell is the best. Powell is the best. If they want to run him this year and his last year, make him the number one running back. Hey, Bill, real quick. Um yeah. I know you got a lot of stuff going on. I wanted to ask you about on the wide receiver core what you're thinking about, like Robbie Anderson and Terrell Pryor and some of the guys on the outside. Loving it. Loving the wide receivers, man. Loving Robbie. Loving Jermaine Curse. 
I'm going to write up an article on him about getting resigned because they need him. He's a, he's a magnet. He, he's only dropped two passes last year. He was very close to Robbie Anderson and all them catches and yards and all that. Uh, How do you think they mix him in with Quincy coming back? Yeah, I know. Quincy has got to come back. If Quincy comes back, it's going to be funny. But um, Robbie's going to be the number one. If Quincy comes back, I don't know what they're going to do with him. Put him in the slot? Put him somewhere? You know, they don't really have a tight end, do they? So they don't really have a tight end, do they? Yeah. I what do you think? About, I heard about them putting them in tight end. Well, that's how they used them before. Um, right. Was that de facto tight end role? You know, but that was that was different coordinator, different times. It was you know we we're pushing almost two years ago. Might be a good idea. Might really might be a good idea. Try it. I mean, you've got very uh, you've got a handful of names, but not a whole lot of production in the yeah. tight end. You know, Pryor is has been in the boot all year. It's his second surgery on the same ankle, you know, and that's worrisome. If he makes it through the camp, they gotta pay him the, the what is it, five million? That I don't even know. think he makes it through camp. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think that Terrell Pryor get uh, get gets cut before the before, like, the third preseason game against the Giants. I'm going to be honest with you, because he spent so much time, you know, be, being in the boot. You know, and Todd Bowles always says in his, pre, in his press conferences, you can't make the club from the tub. Well, I mean, this kid, you know, really hasn't shown you anything because of, because of the boot. So, I mean, it, it'd be, uh, it, it, it would really be hard-pressed to, um, you know, find a roster spot for him, especially if he's being outperformed by some of these younger guys. Well, you don't have to cut down till the end now. I mean, right, if they cut him, they could choose to do so. But that would right. mean he's so horrifically bad or he's just worthless and running around on one freaking ankle. Like, so, like cutting Hill. someone in <laughs> prior to the deadline, <laughs> you know, you've got to be really bad to get cut, you know, before you actually have to be, when you can hang yeah, on to, like, 90. Right. Right. And yeah, with Cleveland. Cleveland, he went to Washington, and he could play quarterback too. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but, he was originally. Yeah, he he was originally drafted by Oakland bad. in the supplemental draft. Either. So, right, yeah, he had, he actually wasn't. So, um, all right, so Bill, we're we're getting we're we're starting to come up against it here. Uh, final thoughts about uh, about this New York Jets squad as they start moving into training camp, which is roughly, I'd say, about less than two weeks away. Do uh, what, what, you have any hot takes for us? I just think this team has to improve and keep on moving, keep on and get get some enthusiasm, cause some fumbles. I see a lot. I see the secondary getting a lot of interceptions this year. I do. I see Jamal Adams getting some interceptions and fumbles. He's going to hit some people hard. And we got to not throw interceptions. If Teddy Bridgewater is the quarterback, he's not going to throw interceptions. And we're going to win some fucking games. Sorry for my language right there. But nah, we're going to win some games, baby. We're going to win I some just games. said Teddy B. Like, we're good. <laughs> we're fine with language. Yeah, it's all good here. We're not, uh, we're not, you know, PC over here at the Jets Factor Podcast. We like to keep it loose. So, all right, buddy. Uh, yeah, I, I like, I like this team. I like the way it's going. We got a lot of money next year too, and we're gonna build the championship team. All right, all right, Bill. Hey, thanks for joining us, man. Give your, give your uh, social media information real quick. Before we get wrapping up, you know, how people could check you out. And, and all of them. Check me out at Twitter, um, uh, Bleed Green 247. You know, I run the Instagram page. Check out the New York Jetters. It's at New York Jetters. That's a great page. And if you want to talk football on Facebook, we got look up Fly Jets Fly. And we are going to have fun in there. We're going to have some giveaways too. 
jerseys, and we're going to have some giveaways this year on the uh, New York genocide. So. Nice. All right, well. Thanks for joining go, us, man. All right. Before you, you go, uh, 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 what you call it? I want, I want to give you this, uh, this last promo here as we start right. to wrap the show up. The Jets Factor right. Podcast has got a contest. They partnered up with StatementGames.com. We got two tickets, New York Jets, New England Patriots, November 25th, MetLife Stadium, Thanksgiving weekend. That's right. Section 300, boys and girls, you guys will get an opportunity to win these tickets via this podcast in StatementGames.com. And all you got to do is send a text. That telephone number to send a text is 516, area code 207-0905. Text the word JETS to that telephone number. You're going to get a prompt that's going to bring you to StatementGames.com. Put your name, put your email. You are in the sweepstakes. It does not get any easier than that. Get in and get go and root on your green and white Thanksgiving weekend as those bastard patriots come to town and we kick the ever-living oh, shit them. out of Tom Brady and that, and that other pussy boy Julian Edelman after he gets <laughs> done with his friggin' suspension. <laughs> And him and that freaking retard Gronkowski that he belongs on the gong show. I'd, I'd, I'd like to hit him with a sledgehammer, that friggin' mook. All right? Go <laughs> on. Done. Get him. They're done. We're going to squash him. <laughs> we're going to yeah, squash him. Hey, does that just include airfare or is it just the tickets? No, it's just, it, it's just the tickets. So right. all you got to do, right. 516-207-0905. Yep. I do have to say one thing, CJ. I don't think you could actually hit Gronk with a sledgehammer because I think he's a protected species being a polar bear. <laughs> just legally speaking, I don't think you could do that. Just, oh, just so you tell me. You know, you take away all my fun with this endangered species bullshit. When did you become politically correct over here? I'm not the EPA. But he's a freaking bear running around on the field. He's got no brain. He's just looking for salmon. Whoa, where's the salmon? And he thinks the football's a salmon. And that's how he gets all the touchdowns. Oh, man. So somebody just sick the, sick the tick infested dog on him. There you go. That you can do. What you that's perfectly one fine. Year contract with the Patriots, right? One year? Who's that? Uh, who's Gronk that? Uh, Gronk? Oh, uh, who the hell one knows? Year, right? uh, well, I, I don't think know what just, the hell his deal is. I just think they haven't re-signed him. Like, I think it's the last year of his deal. Signed late. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah. It, it, him and Tom Brady are too busy being butthurt because their personal uh, trainer now got kicked out of the Patriots facility. And now, you know, they have to go practice at the TB12 facility. So, you know, to, you know Tom Brady and Gwonk, they get to hold hands in the shower you know, with the trainer and the whole skit and poor, poor uh, you know, bitchy boy Bill and uh, can't join in on the hijinks anymore. So I don't know. Maybe he felt like the odd man out. Who knows? So maybe he had performance anxiety. You never know. He might have dropped his pants and, then, you know, it, it didn't work. It wasn't showtime. So, you know, little Petey doesn't want to perform. Well, hey, then you're screwed. You know, it is what it is. You know, what the hell do you think goes on in their locker room? <laughs> I Jesus. Oh, well, you just made them into, like, some kind of, like, bizarre bear porn or something. I don't even know what the hell that just became. <laughs> what the hell? Like, do you, do you think they're role-playing, like, Gronk is Yogi Bear and Brady is Boo-Boo? Uh, that, that could be the possibility. Listen. Hey, Boo-Boo. Listen, the, possibility, hey, Boo-Boo. the possibility is that <laughs> at the last game, I'm saying this right now. The last game, we are going to have a shot at the playoffs. It's going to be the Jets, Patriots. We're going to have either the same record or we win the tiebreaker or something like that. We just got to take care of these AFC East teams. The Bills, come on. We got to take care of them. Enough. I think McCoy is going to get suspended, right? And then the it, South- Who knows, man? Who knows? That, yeah. That's going both ways now. It's going like, oh, it didn't happen at that and now. We just got to take care of our own division. I think we'll be good. And the last game against the Patriots, oh, man, that would be very nice. I mean, yeah. We're, we're getting unpredicted with the uh, six wins, which I think is the Vegas prediction by over on the 
And it sounds right. Six one sounds right. It's gonna be awesome. But nah, I got them. I got them at at ten and six. Huh? So I got them at ten and six. I I picked ten and six, and I'm 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 sticking with it. So I think we definitely split against the Patriots. I think that I think there's a chance we sneak in as a wild card, maybe. But you know what? I mean, I'm not expecting them to make the playoffs this year. For me, I want to see this team finish better than five and eleven, because I think that this team is better than five and eleven. CJ. Yes, sir. Pass me those rocks you're smoking, by the way. I love <laughs> yeah, this team too, but I don't. I, I don't see ten wins. I'm sorry. Like I see maybe seven, eight, something like that. Okay. So, but all hey, right, you want to pass the you want to pass the dude to the left hand side? That's good. Hey, there we I'm go. Down with that. There dude, we go. I'm down. So we are down. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again uh, for downloading and listening to the Jets Factor podcast uh, here on SoundCloud.com. You can check us out. On Twitter, at CNC Jets Factor. My partner in crime, at CSS Sardinas. I am at JetsFan0523. Shoot the show an email, thejetsfactor at gmail.com. We have a Facebook page, ladies and gentlemen. Go on, smash that like button in the face. Send us a message over there. We will message you right back. All right, don't forget to. (laughs) Hey, boo boo. (laughs) So don't forget to check out our content and also, again, get in on this contest. New York Jets, New England Patriots, November 25th. 516-207-0905. 516-207-0905. Text the word JETS to that telephone number. Get in on that sweepstake. The, the, the winner will be announced that we, the week before the game here on this very show. Cannot wait for it. We will also have Mark Salino, uh, uh, the founder of StatementGames.com, uh, also making the announcement with us. Don't forget to go and check them out. Don't forget to hit up Big C's Barbershop. So, For Carlos, the Hitman Sardinas, and William Cochran, this is CJ, the Painkiller D. Simone, signing off. And we will see you guys when we see you guys. Peace. Go Jets. Hey, boo-boo.